In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, I welcome you to the series of the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. Already Sunday number five. And um, today is also the first Sunday of the first Sunday of the month of February. So I can wish you a very happy new month. I hope you're doing well and God has been gracious already we're in February and I'm sure God will continue to give us his grace to continue like that gradually. Uh, by his grace, we'll reach the destination. You know, the destination is not just December, the end of the year. The destination is heaven and this is our hope. Dearly beloved in Christ, my name is Father Emem Umoren of the Catholic Diocese of Ikorikbene in Nigeria. And uh, if you listen to the opening prayer, something, something struck me there. And the opening prayer read, Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, relying on the hope of heavenly grace, your family may be defended always by your protection. Relying on the hope of heavenly grace. Daily beloved in Christ, I desire to share today's reflection on the theme, never dispense with hope. Never dispense with hope. Never ever dispense with hope. Don't give up. Don't stop hoping. Never ever dispense with hope. So that's why that reading, sorry, that um, opening prayer, the collect is very important. Keep your family safe, O oh Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace. Never dispense with hope, dearly beloved in Christ. See, just look at what is happening in our world today. Whether you are in Africa, you are in Europe, you're in America, in Asia, name any continent. Wherever you find yourself, life has become very terrible. Suffering is the order of the day. It is not easy. Even with those, with those who believe they are better off, it is still not as easy as it used to be. Things are hard. Life is difficult. There is a lot of suffering in the land. And we all know this, not because we have been told, but we know this because we have experienced it. And you'll be asking yourself, why all this suffering? Why all this hunger? Why all this killing? Why all this dying? Why all the things we are seeing today? Dearly beloved in Christ, the first reading, in the first reading, Job captured this human situation vividly. The first reading is from the book of Job. Chapter 7, verses 1 to 4 and 6 to 7. And he, said, he tells, I am full of tossing from morning till night. I suffer, I move around, I toil. At the end of it, you go to bed, you cannot even sleep. And he says, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and come to an end without hope. That is really what touched me again. See, the gospel is, sorry, the, the, the opening prayer is saying we should make sure that we rely solely on the hope of heavenly grace. And now Job in the first ring is saying, I end my day without hope. Go back and read Job chapter 7 verses 1 to 4, 6 to 7. Let me take a little, so that I want you to see the picture Job paints here is not only the picture of his own situation. It is a picture of the world today. Job says, has not man a heart service upon earth, and are not his days like the days of a hireling? Like a slave who longs for the shadow, and like a hireling who looks for his wages. So I am allotted months of emptiness. I am allotted months of emptiness, and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing till dawn. On your bed, you're just moving, tossing, tossing, thinking, thinking, 
till dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and come to their end without hope. It's very sad, dearly beloved in Christ. But this is a true situation. There are people in this world who are tempted because of situation to end their day without hope for the next minute. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. See, the whole thing is so, so hopeless. That is the, the picture painted is so hopeless. The picture of hopelessness painted here is terrible. But what touched me was, I end my day without hope. And daily beloved in Christ. That takes me back to the theme. I'm advising you. That takes me back to the theme. I am I'm, I'm giving you this message of hope and telling you, please, never ever dispense with hope. Even if it looks hopeless, don't think hopelessness. Don't feel hopelessness. No matter what happens, never ever dispense with hope. Continue to believe that there is a way out. And surely there is a way out. The near hopelessness of today is everywhere. On our faces, in the different streets of the, the, wherever, whichever nation you go to. It's everywhere, written there, very glaringly. But today, there is reason to believe that we must not ever dispense with hope. Because if you do, if you do, it's the worst that can ever happen to you. It is because you hope. That's why you are sick and you move to the hospital. It is because you hope. That's why you see some people finish school, have no job, you're still going to school. It's because you hope that things will change. You hope for a better time. And, then, and that's hope. The expectation that a desired good will come to pass. That's the best understanding of hope. There is this expectation, the secure expectation that some desired good will come to pass. It is very important in life. Even in the face of hopelessness, dearly beloved in Christ, please don't dispense with hope. Always believe that um, some desired good will come to pass. And I'm going to tell you why you should always believe. I'm going to tell you why you should always expect that desired good to come to pass. First of all, physically, if you dispense with hope, physically, you lose everything to live for. If you dispense with hope, you have no chance even to be helped by another person. If you dispense with hope, you cannot even help yourself. So physically, it's very dangerous to dispense with hope. There is no life without hope. In fact, without hope, there is no life. So when, when, when Job says in the first reading, my day ends without hope, it really touched me. And there are people like that. You go to bed, you don't, you're sick, you have no idea whether you make it till the morning, you have no idea of um, whatever you eat, what your children will eat, you have no idea what the next day will be like. Can you think of people who spend all their life in prison? Those who have no hope of coming out from that prison? Can you think of those who are in the kidnapper's den? Can you think of those who are sick and cannot help themselves? There are situations, surely in this world, just as Job said, there are situations of hopelessness. But please, dearly beloved in Christ, never allow the situation to push you into believing that there is no reason to hope. There is always reason to hope. Don't dispense with hope. Don't dispense with hope. And dearly beloved in Christ, if you look at all that Job said, the second reading comes to bring us in, to tell us that we too can do something to repent a picture of hope in a situation of hopelessness. We can learn from Paul in the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. In that letter, Paul shows how he became all things to all men. And to the weak, he became weak, that he might win them back. And he, to, the, to the strong, he was also everything for them. So when there is hopelessness, I am invited to present a ray of light that can bring back hope to other people. You are invited to bring back that hope to other people. We are now agents of hope. I send you out. God sends you out and I send you out as an agent of hope. Let nobody around you have reason to dispense with hope. I send you out as an agent of hope. Please, let nobody have reason to dispense with hope. And before you become an agent of hope... <clears throat> 
before you become an agent of hope, you yourself must be hopeful. You must be sure that the good you desire will come to pass. And there must be a basis for that hope. You don't hope um, against hope. You don't hope uh, uh, against nothing. There must be a basis for that hope. And today, as we tell ourselves that we must not dispense, of hope, dispense with hope, I want to remind you that the basis for this hope, the foundation for this hope, the reason why you should not dispense with hope is given in today's gospel. The same hope that was lost in the first reading is restored by Jesus in the gospel reading. You see, the gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1 verses 29 to 39. And in this gospel reading, Jesus restores hope to the family of Peter. The mother-in-law was sick, many people were sick, and Jesus restored hope. So is it sickness that is bringing you hopelessness? Is it um, maybe poverty that is bringing you hopelessness? What is it that is bringing you hopelessness? Whatever is bringing you hopelessness, Jesus can take care of that. He has taken care of that before in the past, and he will take care of it now. Dearly beloved in Christ, do not dispense with hope. And that's why I, I really like hearing this song. <clears throat> I want to invite you to sing with me a little. This song that tells us about why we must securely stand by Jesus, stand with Jesus, because he's a source of our hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the warming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Just because you are standing on this solid rock called Christ, dearly beloved in Christ, never ever dispense with hope, no matter how bad it is. It was terribly bad with Job. It's terribly bad with many people today. But just as Job, eventually, the same Job who lamented, the same Job who lamented, in the first reading today, go read the book of Job to the end. You see that same Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. The same Job who said, my day ends without hope. Ended the, uh, well, let me say, his book, that book ended with hope, so much hope. And he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Because we have this Redeemer, because we have Jesus today. Dearly beloved in Christ, never ever dispense with hope. No matter how bad it is, it is not too bad for God to intervene. I know it can be difficult, but let us have this little faith that on Christ the solid rock on whom we stand and on which we stand, that we will move from hopelessness to hopefulness. We'll move from hopelessness to secure hope. And I pray that you take this message to heart. Never, ever dispense with hope. Let us pray. God, our Father, thank you for the message of today. Life is difficult for so many of us. But it would have been more difficult if you, Lord, had not intervened. 
and your intervention in the past gives us grace and gives us confidence to continue to hope that the future will be a better time. Lord God, bless us as we struggle on. May we never ever dispense with hope. May we continue to believe that standing on you, the solid rock, every other ground is sinking sand, and since we are on you, that it is secure ground. Bless us as we go out there, and bless all the people suffering there who have reasons to speak like Job, as he initially said, my day ends without hope. Lord God, bless them with the grace, and may they have reasons at the end to also conclude with hope and like, conclude with Job and like Job, and say that you, the Redeemer, liveth. Since you are alive, we have reasons to face tomorrow. May we never, ever dispense with hope. And may the blessings of the mighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, remain with all of us as we continue to hope in you now and forevermore. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, yes, there is hope. I mean it, there is hope. There is hope. As you go out there, please remember, subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends, and I'm sure you like it. But as you go out there, leave it out. Never, ever dispense with hope. God bless you.